JBN keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones and in the news, intruder dies following alleged beating by a woman in Portland. The Portland police have launched an investigation into the death of an unidentified man who is believed to have been beaten to death by three women who also may attempted to rob. The police believe the man died from suffocation after a lost consciousness from the woman beating him and sitting on him as a means of restraint. The incident happened early Friday morning in the Hartill community in the parish. According to a police source, the man entered the home of the woman through a window about 3 a.m. but was caught by three women who went to investigate after hearing strange sounds coming from a room. The man, who was spotted with a number of items, reportedly pulled a knife and threatened the woman while advancing towards them. During a tussle, the robber was disarmed and was allegedly beaten and sat upon by the woman. The robber reported lost consciousness and was rushed to hospital but later died. The Buff Bay police have since launched a probe into the incident. Antoinette Orton Cardenas, former Firebrand talk show host, has died. Former talk show host and attorney at law Antoinette Orton Cardenas has died. Orton Cardenas died Friday morning in the United States where she had resided for over 15 years. It is understood that Orton Cardenas had been ailing for some time with an undisclosed illness. She was 67. Orton Cardenas shot to national prominence in the 1990s as a firebrand talk show host who championed the rights of the deprived. She gained more popularity in the early 2000s as a co-founder for third political party, the now defunct United People's Party, and as one of the founders of the first women's march in halfway tree. However, she found herself in legal troubles after being accused of stealing millions of dollars from some of her clients. In 2009, the General Legal Counsel, acting upon a recommendation by its disciplinary committee, struck her from the role of attorneys allowed to do legal work in Jamaica. The disgraced lawyer jumped to bail, failed to pay the sum owing, and fled the island. Aunt Cardenas was born in Quiet Islington, St. Mary to parents who were active in both politics and community. Her father was Leith Kenneth Orton, who was the youngest counsel for the Islington Division and held various positions, including president of the Jamaica Cane Farmers Association and Jamaica Banana Board. Aunt Cardenas was the wife of former Cuban ambassador to Jamaica, Oswaldo Cardenas. She survived by a son and her three brothers. Cops probe accident or shooting at TVJ Studio. Police had to be called to a television Jamaica TVJ studio after a security guard shot himself Thursday morning. Sources revealed that the 52-year-old security officer accidentally shot himself in the hand at the Retirement Road St. Andrew studio and was taken to hospital for treatment. It is understood that around 11.53 a.m., a loud explosion was heard coming from the lobby of the studio. Employees rushed to the lobby where they saw the security officer clutching his right hand. He reported to them that he accidentally shot himself and was subsequently rushed to hospital. Police said the guards licensed firearms has been seized as they continue their investigations. Interviews are to be conducted with several individuals who were at the scene, including a vice president from Supreme Ventures. Mock arrest suspected lottery scammers. The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency Mocha on Thursday arrested two more suspected key players in the illegal lottery scamming industry. The suspects, one from a Grand Village address and the other from Montego West Village, were picked up by Mocha agents working alongside members of the police's lottery scamming task force. The first operation took place in Montego West Village, where the intended suspect the first operation took place in Montego West Village where the intended suspect was apprehended along with an unidentified female. Mocha says during the operation, a laptop, four cell phones and several SIM cards were recovered. In the second operation in Granville, Mocha agents arrested the targeted individual and seized five cell phones, a laptop and several lead sheets. Both suspects have been processed pending further investigation and are expected to be charged shortly. According to Major Basil Jarrett, Director of Communications at MOCA, the recent successes of MOCA and its law enforcement partners are a testimony to the strength of the joint approach being taken in fighting this and other forms of organized crime. Teen thief caught in sting operation set up by victim, mom dies after hearing news of arrest. The victim of a robbery in South Camp Road in Kingston set up a sting operation to recover a stolen Nintendo Switch gaming console and put the alleged perpetrator behind bars. Anthony McKenzie, 19, was arrested and charged with robbery with aggravation. On Tuesday, 
He stood before presiding judge at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court, Lauren Cole Montague, as his attorney pleaded for a bail to be offered to him. According to the prosecution's file, on March 30, the complainant allegedly met Mackenzie and another man on South Camp Road to sell him a Nintendo Switch. However, after being handed the item, the accused reportedly turned out his pocket and said, Honestly, I rob you, I rob you. The men then ran off with the item. The value of the game was not revealed in court. However, after the complainant saw the Nintendo Switch being advertised on Facebook Marketplace, she created a fake account and sent a message detailing that she would like to purchase the item and they should meet at the police station. After seeing Mackenzie, she identified him to the police as one of the men who robbed her and his bag was searched and the game recovered. After being arrested, Mackenzie reportedly said to the police, Has someone give me it for sale? During the bail application, Mackenzie's attorney told Judge Cole Montague that his client is a subcontractor for a local internet provider and he has been in custody since April 2. When his mother realized that he was arrested, she passed that same day, the attorney said. The lawyer added that his client does not have any previous conviction. I intend to offer Mr. Mackenzie bail, the judge said. Mackenzie was given bail in the sum of $250,000 with one to two sureties. He was ordered to surrender all travel documents and a stop order be placed at all ports. He was also ordered to report to the nearest police station on Wednesday. It is quite unfortunate that on hearing of his predicament, his mother passed the same day. That's a hard thing for anyone to have to live with for the rest of your life, the judge said. Additionally, the Crown indicated that the complainant doesn't wish to continue the matter. However, she just wants the item back. This prompted the prosecutor to set a further date, which will allow him to get a statement from the complainant indicating her position on the matter. The matter was adjourned until June 5. JFJ Sam's proposal to impose minimum 20-year prison term for children guilty of murder. A proposed amendment to the Child Care and Protection Act which prescribes a term of not less than 20 years before a minor found guilty of committing murder becomes eligible for parole is being described as absolute madness by one rights group. The bill, which was tabled in Parliament last week, is a companion measure to a suite of proposed laws that will impose increased mandatory minimum sentences for murder. Jamaicans for Justice and JFJ Executive Director Mikhail Jackson said she finds the tough on crime approach touted by the government to be problematic and fraught with conflicting policies. She noted that, on the one hand, the administration proposes rehabilitation and child diversion, while on the other, it suggests locking them away for years. At the same time, the Cornwall Bar Association President Michael Hemmings believes that members of the judiciary are capable of hearing matters and making a decision based on the merit of each case in determining punishment. No statute should try and dictate or step in the arena of the purview of the judiciary as it relates to imposing a statutory minimum mandatory sentence, Hemmings said on Thursday. Reacting to the suggested changes to the Child Care and Protection Act, Jackson said that it was the JFJ's belief that any proposed legislation must have expressed provision for judicial discretion to be exercised. She said, when sentencing is being imposed on a child, the judge will have the authority to prescribe a sentence that deviates from any mandatory minimum term of incarceration. Jackson called on the government to conduct a comprehensive review of the Child Care and Protection Act. We call on the Minister of Youth and Education, in particular, to focus on tabling proposals that address matters of corporal punishment and those that offer greater protection for children who are subjected to sexual and other forms of abuse, rather than one that sees children being locked away for an extended time, Jackson said. What the government is proposing is that children will be subjected to mandatory sentences and the court cannot consider whether a child may be reformed through rehabilitative treatment or if their age may have played a part in their offense. Instead, courts are bound by the sentences mandated by the law. Jackson said that this practice undermines the conventions of the right of the child to which Jamaica is a signatory. It is recognized that children have diminished culpability, greater prospects for reform, and are therefore less deserving of the most severe punishments, she added. We posit that courts must maintain sufficient discretion that, when they are sentencing children, they can make individualized determinations of culpability that not only look to the age of a minor, but also consider the background, cognitive, mental and emotional development of the child, the JFJ executive director said. Jackson questioned, or oh, just as a society, where a child at 12 or 13, for example, one who may have faced hardships, possibly exploited by a hardened criminal, be sentenced to a mandatory 20 years. 
not possibly out before his or her 32nd birthday. While conceding that the crime rate in Jamaica is high, Jackson argued that neither fear nor political expediency should drive public policy. The rights group contends that the courts must have the discretion to impose punishment that serves the best interests of the child while balancing public interests and the safety. Quite frankly, we believe that the government's attempt to undermine the court's very discretion through excessive minimums is categorically repugnant to the rule of law and the concept of the separation of powers, she said. A joint select committee has been established to review amendments to the Child Care and Protection Act, the Criminal Justice Administration Act, and the Offences Against the Person Act. In January, Justice Minister Delroy Chuck signaled that the government would be moving to introduce legislation that imposes mandatory minimum sentences of 50 years before parole for capital murder. Five shot in drive-by. Five people shot and injured following a drive-by at the intersection of Tower Street and Matthews Lane in downtown Kingston about 9.20 p.m. on Thursday. Head of the Kingston Central Police Division, Superintendent Burstwood Williams, said that the gunshot victims were taken to hospital and are being treated. None are suffering from life-threatening injuries. What information we have received so far is that a car drove up and occupants opened gunfire at the group of people who were sitting along the roadway, Williams said. The senior cops said that the area has been relatively peaceful in recent times and that the police were treating the matter as an isolated incident. Usually the people just sit there in line. We had a meeting there with them on Monday as part of our community walkthrough engagement, although we have not had an issue there for the longest while, Williams added. Since January, there have been 20 reported incidents of shootings in the police division. The figures represent an 81% increase when compared to the numbers of the corresponding period in 2022. The Jamaica Constabulary Force has also reported that the division experienced the same number of murders, 12, since the start of the year, when compared to the corresponding period from the previous year. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.